Hi there, this is David Williams, and in this video I'm going to talk some more about Boolean algebra simplification, and specifically about De Morgan's theorem. Now, Augustus De Morgan, he was a contemporary of George Boole, and he made significant contributions in mathematics and in, and in logic. And the laws that uh, we're going to talk about today had actually been expressed before by William of Ockham, and similar laws had even been expressed by Aristotle. But De Morgan was the one that formalized them. Now, these laws that I've actually written here may seem simple and even trivial, and they are once you fully understand them, but I've found that there's some common mistakes that students make, and I want to point out what some of those common mistakes are, go through some examples of using De Morgan's theorem, using a couple of simple step-by-step -step processes to simplify Boolean algebra expressions that have parts of their expression that can be simplified using De Morgan's theorem. So I've rewritten out De Morgan's theorems here. The first one, I've, I've written it out as a Boolean algebra expression and then described it in words. The complement of a product of variables is equal to the sum of the complements of the variables. I think it's easier to understand just looking at the, looking at the expression. The second of De Morgan's theorems is the complement of a sum of variables is equal to the product of the complements of the variables. And what that means is, I think it's a little bit more straightforward when you look at the expression. When you take a or b and invert it, that's equal to not a anded with not b. And as logic gates, what this is saying is that the NAND gate with a and b applied to the input is the same as a passed through an inverter, b passed through an inverter, and then connected to an OR gate. For this part of De Morgan's theorem, this is the same as saying A and B applied to a NOR gate is the same as A passed through an inverter, B passed through an inverter, and then both connected to an AND gate. The Morgan's theorems can also be applied to more than two variables. So if I have A, B, and C all inverted, that's the same as A inverted or with B inverted or with C inverted. And similarly, similarly with the second version, A or B or C inverted is equal to A inverted and it with B inverted and it with C inverted. The common point of confusion is identifying what parts of an expression are all being inverted. So for example, in this expression here, A, B, and C are all anded together first and then inverted. So the common, the common mistake that I see is, is this. This is not true. This this side of the expression, a, b, and c are added together and then inverted. On this side of the expression, a is inverted, b is inverted, c is inverted, and then the outputs of those not gates are all added together. So if you, if you look at this in, in logic gates, it might make a little bit more sense of why these are not true, because we can trace a signal as it goes from inputs to outputs. For this expression here, we would have a three input AND gate with A, B, and C as the inputs, and then after they get anded together, they get passed through an inverter. Whereas this side of the expression, A gets inverted, B gets inverted, and C gets inverted, and then they're passed through an AND gate. The the outputs of all those inverters are passed through this AND gate. So tracing the signal from, from left to right, you can see that it's not the same, the same process that the signal goes through. So it's really important when you're looking at the Boolean algebra expression to pay attention to what the bar is covering or what, the, what part of the expression is actually being inverted. Now I want to go through the process of taking a Boolean algebra expression where you can see there's some identifiable parts that can be simplified with De Morgan's theorem and going through that simplification process. 
For this first simplification process, first step is to identify the demorganizable part of the expression. So basically the part of the expression that has a large part of it inverted. In this case, it's all of the expression. The second step is to invert the expression. And it should be noted that this step makes an expression that is not equal to the original step. But we'll go through a few steps, and when we get to the end, then it will be equal to what the original, what the original expression looked like. So inverting the expression, a, not b, or c. Basically, we've, we've inverted the expression, so double inversion then is going to eliminate any inversion of the whole expression. The third step is to change ands to ors and ors to ands. So this will become a or not b. I'll make sure I keep order of operations here. Anded with c. And the last step is to complement or invert all the variables. And this, this is the last step, so what we're going to create here now is a function that is equal to the original function. So a gets inverted, not b gets inverted, keep those brackets, and c gets inverted. This double not goes away, and the final expression is not a or b ended with not c. Now this process is easy to apply to a simple operation or to a simple expression, specifically an expression where you only have one inversion over a large part of a process over a large part of an expression. Now I want to show you another process that can be applied to any larger expression with any number of inverted sections. So let's go through process number two here. I have an example expression that I want to simplify using De Morgan's theorem. So the first step is to identify terms for which De Morgan's theorem is applicable. Well, De Mor I can apply De Morgan's theorem to the whole expression, and then I have a few terms within or under the, the inversion bar here. But what I'm going to do is identify groups of terms. Here I've got A or not B all inverted, and here I've got C not D all inverted. So I'm going to treat that part all as one variable, and that part all as one variable. Let's call these X. That's one, that group X, and let's call this group Y. So really now this, this expression becomes x or y all inverted, which we know from the basic expression of De Morgan's theorem is equal to not x and not y. So we actually just did the second step there, which was to use De Morgan's theorem on these single variables. So I've done that simplification here. Now we can substitute the full expressions back into the single variables. So now replace x with the a or not b all inverted term. So that's a or not b all inverted. Well, this is the expression that I was substituting with x, and that's inverted. Anded with my y, which was c not d all inverted, but then that's inverted. So now I've got a couple of double inversions or double bars here. And so anytime you have double negation, they disappear. And now I'm left with my expression. My overall expression is A or not B anded with C and D. One thing I'm, I'm sort of missing here is some brackets just to show order of operations. Because I have this full operation is occurring before we OR these two together, I want to make sure I'm grouping my A and B together so that this OR operation occurs before I AND with C and D. So the last two steps in process two, cancel the double knots where possible. Well, I just did that, and then repeat as needed. Well, as far as De Morgan's theorem goes, this expression is as simple as possible, or there's no more there's no more application of De Morgan's theorem here. I can, however, expand this out to put it in a sum of products form. So this would be equal to A C D ORed with not B C D. Now I'm just going to do a few more examples. So I've got an example here, a or b inverted, or with not c, and then the whole expression inverted. So I can look at this part of the expression, call that my x, this part of the expression, call that my y, so I basically have x or y all inverted. Of course that's equal to x or y all inverted is equal to not x anded with not y. Then I can resubstitute back in my a or b inverted for my x and my c, my not c for my y and I will get a or b inverted 
but inverted again because x is inverted, and it with not c inverted. So this is really similar to the example that I just did. I can get rid of my double not or my double negation there, and I'm left with a or b anded with c. A or b has to, of course, occur, occur first before it gets anded with c, and I can expand this out to give me ac or bc. Here's another example. This time I'm going to use the process one that I showed you. So process one, first thing I do is I complement the function or I invert the function. And I just have a and b or c. Of course, this term is not equal to this term, but what we end up with will be equal to the original term. The next thing is I change my operations, my ands to ors and my ors to ands. So this becomes a or b and c. Then I complement all the variables, or I invert all the variables. So this becomes not a, this becomes not b, and this becomes not c. And then I'm done. So the original expression is equal to not a or not b anded with not c. Here's a much more complicated looking expression, and I'm going to use the process two or the substitution expression. So what I'll look at is here's a group that I will put together and call this x. I'll just call e, y, and I'll call f, z. So we can apply De Morgan's theorem, of course, to more than just two variables. So if we have x or y or z all inverted, that's equal to not x anded with not y anded with not z. So I can resubstitute back in my original expressions for x, y, and z, and I will have a or b anded with not c anded with not d all inverted anded with e inverted anded with f bar bar. So I've got the double inv double inversion here of f or the double bar so I can delete those. I, I'm not finished. I'm not finished with De Morgan's theorem yet. I see that I have an expression here where I can apply De Morgan's theorem. In this case I'll call the a or b x the not c is y and the not d as z. So x and y and z inverted is of course equal to not x or with not y or with not z. So resubstituting in for x I'll have a or b all inverted or with c bar inverted or with d bar inverted. These two double bars, double negations go away cancel out, and I've got not A or B, or with C, or with D, that whole expression anded with not E and F. Still not done. I can apply De Morgan's theorem here. This is a really simple form, so this, this simply becomes not A and B, or not B, or with C, or with D, anded with not E F. Now that's as, as far as I can go with De Morgan's theorem. I can expand out to put this in a sum of products form. So I'll have not A and not B anded with a not E and F. I'll have the C anded with a not E and F. And I'll have the D anded with a not E and F. And now I'm finished. I have it in as simple a form as I can get with a sum of products expression. I'll do one more example and hopefully this will be enough to familiarize yourself at least with, with De Morgan's theorem and how to use, use the theorem to simplify some Boolean algebra expressions. Alright, so this, this expression, I can treat this whole term there as an x. Actually, maybe I shouldn't use x. Since I already have an x, I'll treat that whole term there as a. I'll treat this whole term there as b this whole term here as C. 
So we have a and b and c all inverted is of course equal to a inverted ordered with not b ordered with not c. So now substituting back in, I've got u or v inverted as my a, but a is inverted. Ordered with w or x inverted, there's my b, and that's inverted. Ordered with y or z inverted is my c, and that's all inverted. Now I've got these three double bars here. They cancel out. And what I'm left over with is u or v or w or x or y or z. So I hope you learned a little bit about De Morgan's theorem and how to use it to simplify Boolean algebra expressions, and I'll see you in the next video.